All right. Hello everyone. Welcome to or welcome back to another video. I can't speak. Um, but I'm so excited to be doing this video because it's a huge synopsis of my academic career. Um, also, it's my first time sitting down and actually talking to a camera. Usually my videos are more like moving around. I've only made two, three videos, but you can go watch them later. It's gonna be more about my journey to how I chose medicine and how I got to where I am today. So, hey, my name is Zay. Ugh, the rhyme has a ring to it, you know. I am a third year medical student at UCL. I've nearly reached the halfway mark, um, but I've still got a long, long, long way to go. This is why I've started this channel and I really want to document my every step of the way becoming a doctor. But before I decided to just randomly upload videos, I thought I'd make this introduction video to who I am, why I've started these videos, many, many reasons, but in this video mainly, I want to discuss how I got to where I am today and how I got into medicine in the UK and whoever ends up watching this, I hope that you guys find the information that I give you useful and entertaining at the same time and I also hope you like some of the memories that I like documenting along the way. I've never really had any help or any tutoring on how to apply to medicine. So if you're applying and you feel a bit overwhelmed, whether it be medicine, any degree or any unis, and you feel a bit overwhelmed, I hope this gives you a bit of confidence and clarity. Um, anyways, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Dang, that's so funny. Make sure to subscribe, like, follow, comment. I'm not trying not to cringe. All that jazz. Now, there are gonna be timestamps in this video. So if you've decided for sure I want to do medicine. Feel free to skip along and go to the points that you really think would be useful for you. For the lovelies that are unsure about whether medicine is for them or they're just here for vibes, you've made the right choice because I'll be discussing why I actually chose medicine rather than how I got in as well. It's important to know what you're getting yourself into, what to expect and what your future will look like, whether it be fun, bad, sad, lovely, and entertaining. I just want to say something really important, especially for anyone who's feeling really behind or behind in the game. I feel like there is this pressure sometimes, like you have to know your whole life plan from a very early stage of your life. And when you hear people say at the age of what, five, oh, I want to do medicine, I want to become a doctor, you might feel a bit behind just because someone has had their life planned out from such an early stage, it doesn't mean that you're at a disadvantage because everyone moves at their own pace. Taking the time to make a decision that is right for you is actually a strength. I'll come on to my story later, but I didn't decide until year 12, so. So I just wanna do a quick rewind to my story, my background. I'm Turkish and I lived in Dublin for seven years. So that's quite a long time. I had an Irish accent. It's gone now, as you can tell. But when I was really, really young, I was never the person that knew what they wanted to do from such an early age. In fact, I didn't really have an idea until much, much later in my years. I remember my grandma, she would always tell me like, you should become a doctor because there are no other family members that are doctors. And I was like, at the time I was like, oh, I hate needles, I hate blood. And look where I am, look, here I am today. Uh, look where I am. I, I am a medical student. So fast forward a bit from Ireland, moving to England was a bit rough for me academically because the Irish schools had a broader curriculum uh, focusing on like, Gaelic, like the Irish language. When I came to the UK, everything felt different and it suddenly felt more rigid because it was more exam focused and honestly way ahead of what I had hoped it would have been for me academically. It took me years to pro probably a few years to really catch up to my year group. I was behind on everything. It, it was just like a knock to my confidence. That experience did teach me to really get on the grind and work hard and like you don't have to be super super smart, all you have to do is have the motivation and have the mind to really focus on what you want to do. So it's, it's never too late. Obviously being naturally smart will help you but it's always more about the mindset and that's the point I want to make in my story. I went to a very academic secondary school and so as expected, there were 
a lot. There were so many aspiring medics in my year group. I noticed something that really played on my mind quite a lot during my years at secondary school. Some people genuinely, they were really passionate about what they wanted to do, but there were some people that you can just tell that it was more so from the pressure of being accepted by wanting to do a degree that a lot of people would look up to. Not just from my observation, they would explicitly say that. They'd say, I'm only doing it because my mum wants me to do it, which is fair enough. I mean, nothing against them. But some people might not choose medicine if they weren't pressured into doing it. And I just wanna come here to say, it just freaked me out a bit because I didn't want to follow the crowd blindly. There were already people in my cohort, so many people in my cohort that were like, I wanna do medicine from the beginning. And I didn't even know I wanted to do medicine. It just freaked me out. Um, I, I just didn't want to follow the crowd blindly. I made a real effort to step back and really think about it before putting myself into something that was way bigger than anything. So I thought of three things. What do I want? Will it make me happy? Is it right for me? What do I want? Will it make me happy? And is it right for me? So it took me quite a few years to really decide on this and it never really crossed my mind that I'd actually end up choosing this degree. However, throughout the years, I realized that I really loved biology. I really liked chemistry. Not so maths, not so maths. Uh, I, I did really like biology though. Learning about the body really fascinated me. I had a really like big interest on like the body mainly. I didn't like all of biology, can I just say? I hated the, I won't say hate, that's a strong word. I just didn't like learning about photosynthesis and plants um, and ecology, it's just, I'm sorry, couldn't. But the body interested me, so that made me interested in biology. I also really loved hands-on stuff, arts and crafts. Drawing was one of my hobbies. I had my own sketchbook at home and I'd, I had colouring books, you know, I really liked anything crafty. And on top of that, I really genuinely loved talking to people, like actually properly listening and connecting and making them feel seen. I started piecing it together. So arts and crafts, the biology, um, academics. And then to confirm this, I got some work experience done and my I say that was during COVID. So it was an absolute it was a nightmare. I emailed every single person at this one hospital that was really close to me. And one out of all the emails I sent, out of all the emails I sent during COVID replied. And they said, yeah. So I recommend you really put yourself forward just because you get one rejection doesn't mean it's over. Redirection guys, you gotta email all of them, okay? even though I only decided in year 12, it doesn't mean it's over for you. Like, you still have a chance to go for what you want. It's never too late. And just because people decided in what, year seven, when they were three, when they were five, when they were seven, eight, nine, it doesn't mean you can't at the age of what, 16. It doesn't undermine you. It just means they, they had their life um, decided from early on and you had your options open. There are people, in my year, so many in fact, who chose to do medicine after their first undergraduate degree. There are people in my year who are like, in their 40s, in their, like there are people who are 60 years old um, in first year medicine. So it was a decision that I really made after really thinking it through. And I have never looked back. So take that as you will. Why might medicine feel right for you? I gave myself a lot of time to research this and ask the big questions like, can I handle this? Can I enjoy the lifestyle? Will I enjoy the lifestyle? Am I okay with long-term training? Am I okay with that? Maybe I'm still not. And the answer was yes, because I really thought it through. If you do something that you really enjoy, for example, I really love editing videos. So I've started this channel and I wish I started it earlier. So if you're still watching this and still unsure or feel like you're behind, please, please don't panic. Take your time, trust your gut. You are not late. You're just figuring it out properly. And that's something to be proud of. This is gonna be a long video. So questions to reflect on. Can I see myself doing this every day? 
Am I okay with delayed gratification? Do I actually enjoy the subject? Will they bore me to death? Have you seen medicine beyond the surface like through work experience or volunteering? You never know. I'm just going to do a quick section on GCSEs. So I took biochem maths, English language, English lit, maths, additional maths, Spanish, French, computer science, history. Damn, I still remember that. Okay, so I got all nines. Um, and if you guys, if people watching who are like, or year nine or ten or eight or seven, I don't know how early you guys are watching this video. I'll probably make a video on how I approach that separately if needed in the future. If you're doing GCSEs and you're thinking about medicine, I recommend that you really focus on the core subjects because some universities under their requirements have a few GCSEs that you need a minimum grade of. For example, my university, they wanted you to achieve a minimum of what, seven in maths or English and English and the sciences so focus on the core subjects that are required for GCSEs but that's not to say you neglect the others like just work hard for your grades and all I can say is you need to get the grades because no matter what happens medicine the universities aren't gonna feel sorry for you uh, if you don't get the grades like as hard as it sounds really work hard on getting those those grades and if you're doing GCSEs now I'll do a video on this later again but practice past papers a lot don't get sucked into pretty notes don't because it wastes your time and don't just read don't just read your notes if you've got the mindset and the motivation you can achieve a lot but yeah check remember to check every university's requirements just in case GCSEs might seem far from uni life but really building that revision mindset building those revision habits early on will really help you um, when you start applying on to A levels I took biology chemistry and maths which is the classic combo they are heavy subjects especially when you're doing all three together and something that not many people mention is that their exams are usually stuffed all into one month which some people might like but it's a really stressful month during exam period whereas humanities students have like their exams earlier on and spread out so that's not to say you have to take biochem maths you can take biochem art, you can take biochem history. Also try and maybe include a subject that you think you'll enjoy and you think you'll do great in. I know of someone who does medicine at Oxford who did biochem and art, so it literally doesn't undermine you in any way. You don't need to do what everyone else does. And I know I did biochem and maths, but I know quite a few people who didn't do maths and they were perfectly fine. I also think a lot of people underestimate how different A-levels are from GCSEs and how big the jump is from GCSEs to A-levels. So the content goes deeper and the exams are tougher. Anyways, at the end of the day, you really need to focus on something that you will enjoy doing because the med schools, universities don't really care if at, on results day, touch wood because at the end of the day med schools don't actually care if you end up missing your grades um so you just really need to put in the effort and achieve and get the grades out of the way but can i just say you can't cram and you need solid you need consistent work how i managed it i had to become more structured just tweak my styles i made realistic timetables use active recall and kept tweaking my study style until it worked so everyone has their own method again that will be a separate video so advice for the a levels a level people start early even with small chunks you can go a long way don't don't just read active recalls really good and past papers are everything and ask for help early, don't be scared to ask questions. I know you've probably heard of this a lot, but a lot of people are probably thinking the same question in your class when you, uh, questions that you're too afraid to ask. And it's better to learn off a teacher because it sticks in your head more. Also protect your hobbies, um, socialize, and try not to lose structure to your day. And don't make it all study, 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 because then you'll really think your whole life is just studying and that might put you off and that's fair enough so try focusing on different stuff too doing well in a levels isn't all about studying and being a genius it's about being consistent it's about having that mindset it's about being strategic and also being kind to yourself and giving yourself a break when needed okay so on to the ucat <sighs> 
the UCAT was like probably the most stressful time of my life, I can't lie, actually. I've just had so many stressful moments in my life that I think everything was the most stressful thing in my life. If you're about to start UCAT prep, don't over revise because then you'll start overthinking your answers. Again, with UCAT, I got, to be fair, the scoring system changed, but I got 2990 with band one. To people who don't know what UCAT is, UCAT is an admissions test for medicine and dentistry people. Uh, people tend to take the UCAT in their year 12 summer or the September in their year 13. I recommend you get it out of the way before year 13 starts. Yeah, so my main advice would be don't over revise, try and do some short consistent practice. Focus on strategy, um, not just raw knowledge and learn to let go of questions, that's also good. UCAT isn't about being the smartest, it's about being smart with your time. You need to be smart with your strategy, you need to be smart with your nerves. I know it's hard with it, honestly, when I walked into the exam centre, I actually wanted to cry. But if you want a bit of experience before entering the UCAT, maybe try and sit your driving theory to get an idea of what the setting is like because it's quite similar. With the personal statement, get help from your teachers, get people to read, write it, but remember to show people so they can suggest and tweak alternatives. Show it to your parents, show it to your siblings, show it to your older brother, sister, show it to your friends, show it to your teachers. Show, show and tell. So I chose to apply to UCL for medicine. At the end of the day, I applied to a lot of London unis, which I might not recommend doing. I chose to apply to UCL because I really liked the pre-clinical split to clinical. I just like that traditional style. And I also liked UCL, like I remember to go to your open days for universities, just to get a taste of what life is like there. And watch videos like this to see what lifestyle is like. Try not to choose a uni just for the sake of going with your friends. Choose a uni that you think is right for you. And consider the location, consider the accommodation, consider everything. Yeah, this is how I got into medicine. Um, I sat my A-levels, I met my requirements of A-star AA, and I got into UCL. So expect lots of videos. So when you're choosing your unis, be strategic with your stats, look beyond the name, and if possible, go to open days and watch your student vlogs. Anyways, that was my story on how I got into medicine and my journey and a few bits and bobs of, of, of advice. So hopefully that was useful to you. Looking back on the whole journey from figuring out if medicine was for me, from setting my GCSEs, from setting my A-levels and from setting my UCAT, there are a few big lessons that I've learned that I wish someone had told me earlier. The biggest one, the biggest one is that there is no one path into medicine. Some people knew at age five, I decided in year 12. Some had tutoring, some didn't. It doesn't make your journey any less valid. I also learned that comparison is such a confidence killer, it, especially in academic schools. It's easy to feel like you're constantly behind, but honestly, if you stay in your lane and you keep improving yourself, that's honestly all that matters. And I, I wish that I knew that you didn't have to be perfect to get in. If you're doubting yourself, I get it, but don't let imposter syndrome get a hold of you and stop you from even trying. Make sure to be honest about your strengths, be willing to improve, and remember it's all about the mindset so you can really achieve anything. If medicine is really what you want, then go for it. Don't let anyone stop you. Back yourself. It's okay to take your time and it's okay to do it differently. And that's pretty much my whole journey. Um, I didn't document my year one and year two, but from now on, from year three onwards, I will be documenting. Yeah, so that's pretty much my whole journey from figuring out that I wanted to do medicine to actually getting in. And if you've made it this far, I really hope it helped you in some way and it gave you some clarity and confidence in making a well-informed decision. If you've got any questions, work experience, volunteering, personal statement, whatever, drop them down below. Thank you.